Hey guys, Jay here, and today I want to quickly talk about the character that I am playing. And first of all, I want to start by doing a just a layer of Hydra map that I have here. Uh, so we have number of red monster, doesn't matter. Temp chain doesn't matter. Chris strike word multi actually doesn't matter. Monster cannot be ton. It's just speed, whatever. You know, <clears throat> the only modifiers that we are afraid of currently in this in this build is uh, no regen and elemental reflect right so as long as you don't see those on the map you are okay um for the leak mechanic uh i would want to show you a little bit first i am doing fear of the light which means i don't need to look at the leak mechanic on maps it's just random it has chance to have additional haunted amber so you know just basically more stuff other than that, I am taking currently pack to an energy here, but for the purpose of this video, I would not pick up any sulfite or from the map. And I mean, since it's permanently there, you know, if you are mapping with the character, then you can technically consider this to be a part of your character power. But it, of course, will not show in the POV, uh, in the POV later. Uh, this is not a finished skill tree. I progress pretty slowly I would say uh, I just got into red map some tier 15 this is the second hydra map that I got this one dropped from the previous hydra so let's do it let's uh, see if we can okay let's just get the delirium sure why not just to show basically how the build function right this is nothing completely new as the concept. Uh, this is something that is, you know, made last leak. I'm not even sure exactly who is the first one to make this Caspian Stunt build, but it got very popular. A lot of information I got from Crouching Tuna, and also a lot more information I got from another creator that is Victor003. Not do this, this will take a lot of time. Let's just move through. Okay, I forgot I took the <laughs> I took the freaking Nico already. But you know, the the most important thing that the Nico is giving me is actually movement speed because this is a rather slow build. So this league with the present of Nico. I think it is just a viable strategy for any strategy to just take the Nico in the map because the Nico is there just to boost your character movement speed and you know overall damage and stuff. So there is no harm taking it. Normally I would say this league in order to profit the most out of a certain content in the game you probably need to use maximum amount of scarab for that contact. For example, Legion, you need five Legions, I mean four Legion scarabs. If you do uh, Breach, you would need to put on four Breach scarab, basically. So your strategy should be, on the Atlas at least, I think should just generally be one main content that you use the scarab with, and then maybe the outer and then some you know complementary stuff like Nico over here you don't need you don't actually need the uh, scarab for it to actually be beneficial uh, I think shrine can be very good for mapping as well it just add monster and uh, it provides some buff so it boosts your mapping speed if you take the chance for double shrine and you take the um, the note for the shrine to be able to roll the quantity and rarity shrine then that is potentially something very nice, right? For the purpose of this video, I would not do the incursion. Normally, I really do like the incursion. The incursion is my bread and butter. Because uh, early on in the league, the incursion, first of all, is quite easy. Second, it has a lot of monster and have a 1 out of 3 chance for each incursion to have only magic monster. Uh, and, of course, rare and unique. So that is a huge amount of experience, and also it makes some, you know, half decent money, not a lot of money, but selling the tempo is okay for me. Right now the two 
big eyes, the two big rooms for the incursion are the gem and the uh, and the double corrupt one. Uh, they are like uh, 30 and 50 chaos, which is not too much, but it's, you know, doable. We complete one incursion in three maps, so, uh, yeah. Uh, and also, making the tempo is very, very beneficial when you reach, like, red map. If you finish an, a tempo in, like, for example, let's say a tier 16, then, uh, then the zone level of the uh, incursion is gonna be equals to the the final uh, the zone of the, the level of the temple will be equal to the final zone that you complete that incursion, which is the tier 16. And if you have a map room in there, it will drop very very high tier map, red map tier 15, 14, 16, you know those kind of things, and that uh, helps a lot with your map early on. So. That is my strategy going on, you know, as incursion. With this build, I would like to fine tune the gear a little bit more, so I can actually uh, just, uh, you know, do something uh, like uh, delirium and maybe uh, beyond, right? Potentially something that is very juiced, right? As you can see, the purpose of me playing this build again this league is sitting on my lap here, right? So whenever I do, uh, I, I don't have my hand on the keyboard, technically I'm still playing the game, right? So uh, that is the nice thing about the build, right? Uh, normally, if we have Bye. an ignite Bye. on our character, Bye. which is a big ignite from the, uh, from the explosion, right? Then this will just melt instantly the boss which is melt instantly if you are you know controlling the character you just go to their face they hit you a bunch of time and you still deals a lot of damage with the detonate data chain reaction i have got a video out earlier um, show you how to maximize the corpse damage of the uh, detonate data chain reaction which is revolved around a race factor uh, setup that you need to do once for a character and then you can just remove it entirely currently yeah that video is already out so if you want to check it out i will leave the link in the description and also at the end of the video right so now we already we are already uh done with this uh Dorian map you already see how you know roughly how tanky it is and also how much damage it is what the playstyle looks like basically i have if i press if i hold control here you have i have as you see i have five auras and another one here which is automation which is casting my face run and my steel skin right on cooldown uh i have only one button that i can press technically while playing which is the frost blade over here which allow me to actually, you know, just move the skills to re uh, reposition myself. And also, I have another uh, purpose that I will explain a little bit later when I come to the gear and the setup of the character. So, you know, let's go to the POB. Let's see if this little guy will leave me alone for the POB section here. Because I can AFK in the game, but POB is much more dangerous, right? So, POB. Let's go. This is the current POB of the game. Please ignore this. This is the ignite. This is the damage from the corpse explosion. I mean, the main damage will be to uh, detonate dead chain reaction. Uh, in the skill here, uh, I would like to you know talk a little bit about this skill and how it works. So potentially, uh, with cast and stun, like. Uh, Theoretically, if you got hit fast enough by enemies around you, you can cast 10 times per second and they will not cancel out each other. That is why this skill is absolutely busted in a in a uh, cast when stun setup like this because cast when stun only have a cooldown of 0.1 second, which means you can potentially cast up to 10 times per second. So ideally, you will have 10 casts of detonate dead of chain reaction go on uh, at the same time for one second, right? Each cast stands for 10, 10 explosion basically. 
uh, assume that you can supply the corpse. And of course, you supply uh, 10 corpses every time you cast the... Uh, the... the um, where is it? Uh, the freaking... Uh, Desecrate, yeah. Whenever you cast the Desecrate here, you supply 10 corpses because you linked it to Spell Cascade. By default, it only summons 5 corpses. If you link to Spell Cascade, it will summon 10 corpses. If you link this one to Spell Cascade, the spread of the corpses is a little bit weird because it's in a straight line, right? But if you have the money later and you upgrade it to a Wicked Cascade, just level 1 is enough, you don't need high level for it, then the corpses will be spawned in a more circle shape, basically, and it will overlap a little bit better. So. Overall, that is eventually what we need to do, what we want to do, but it is not essential whatsoever. You can technically just play with a normal spell cascade until the end of the game, right? Let's go through this stuff that are interesting. First of all is the skill tree here. This is the current skill tree on my character, which is level 90, and I will throw, go through it a little bit. It is a chieftain currently, because chieftain is cheaper to set up defensively compared to a uh, let's say a juggernaut later on i mean i think the juggernaut will still be better in terms of just pure tankiness so you can handle harder content but <coughs> but chieftain is much better to scale early on and i i mean i don't even think i'm not even sure if later i want to switch to uh Juggernaut anymore because this league we lose out on all the AoE scaling from the charms and the that which was taken from Affliction. So the main kind of selling point of the uh, Chieftain last league was the explosion is absolutely massive. This league we don't have that anymore so the AoE is just decent a little bit uh, more AoE than the uh, Chieftain but you don't have the explosion I mean, you can be much, much more tanky with the Brass Dome setup. Uh, this league, by the way, in the end game setup for a uh, Juggernaut, you have Brass Dome, which give you 5% maximum uh, all elemental resistances. If you have a Mage Blood as well, and just the default uh, Flask, uh, with the increased effect and uh, everything rolled up to like anything above 90%, so each flask actually gives you 9% maximum resistance if you use all three elemental uh, flasks. That means you already have 89% maximum resistances, which is absolutely crazy, and that is all elemental resistances. With just this node over here, just this mastery, you will be able to have 90 cap on all resistance, except for chaos, of course. And that is absolutely massive for defense, basically. You lose out on the less damage taken, but you know, here I am, I'm introducing you a new way to have 20% less damage taken for every single kind of damage. And I think this is the kind of, not upgrade, but you know, this is the kind of interesting thing that makes the build stronger. And it is right here. Nature's Patient, right? Nature's Patient here. Gain two grasping vine each second where you stationary. This is capped at 10 stack. So at 10 stack, you have 20% chance to deal double damage and 10% less take damage taken per grasping vine. And what is uh, the other source of the uh, grasping vine? It is this item over here. Let me show you uh, where is my boots. Yes inextricable fate let me actually show you in the game it looks better right inextricable fate so this boot here it has a some chaos resistance a lot of life and movement speed which is very nice most important thing is it gain three gar three grasping vine when you take a critical strike and that happened all the time throughout mapping because there's a lot of enemies and you know i mean if you do like simulacrum later that's a harder content the simulacrum uh, monster always fucking crit you all the time so you gain that with these two sources of uh grasping vine you actually can have 20 not just cap of 10. cap of 10 is local to one single source of grasping vine if you have more than one you have 
two source of grasping vine here, so you have maximum 20 stack, right? Yeah. Two different buffs. Yeah. Like, for example, right now I'm standing still, I have grasping vine here. If I got hit by enemy and got crit, it will gain grasping vine from this one as well. So, yeah. And I want to talk a little bit about the frost bling here, because this grasping vine also slow you by a lot. As you can see there, the movement speed here is minus 85%. And you can imagine, with the extra 20 stack here, it is even lower. So, one thing, whenever you cast a movement skill, it will immediately lose all the stack of grasping back, so you can move normally. So when you stand still, you gain a lot of defensive um, quite quickly, actually. And then if you want to move around, just use your Frost Blink, which is an instant kill. You don't need have to have cast animation or anything. So you don't care about, you, you, you don't worry about being like staggered by staggered by anything. <coughs> right, uh, let's go back to the POB, uh, so to the tree here. Currently it's level 90. I also kind of lay out the upcoming 10 levels, which is going to be another cluster jewel here. I don't, I have this point allocated, which is kind of dumb, but I mean, technically the last 10 point is going to be 5 points into this, so you have 2 notable here and a 2 medium jewel socket, and the jewel socket is quite helpful because currently with this setup we are unaffected by Ignite because we are chieftain, we are immune to freeze because we run arctic armor, and now only thing that I care about is going to be shock, and you can have, you know, reduced effect of shock on the jewels, which is very nice. Currently, I am running just a random jewel, red jewel here with Quartz of Blood cannot be inflicted on you. Technically, that's the only only thing that you need. It also has 31% reduced effect of shock on you here, so it's kind of nice. With the plus, <coughs> I have one of the flasks that is... Uh, giving me it is on my character by the way 43 percent chance of being shocked it should be reduce uh, shock effect so if you stack enough it will reduce shock effect shock effect you don't care about shock anyway so that is very nice and reduce shock effect is much better than avoid being shocked for one reason which is you are also kind of immune to shock round you still have the shock buff on you but it is reduced to zero percent so it doesn't increase the damage ticket, right? Okay, let's go through the skill tree, actually. So, uh, some random points here are just the last points that I take in the latest level. Uh, so, yeah, if you see random 5% uh, life here, just know that, right? So, I, when leveling, I normally I come down here, go through this side immediately, and just rush straight up here so I can grab some damage straight up here so I can grab some damage because I kind of leveling with Rajas Fire. If you want to, I leave the note in the description here, you probably should go to Pox website and learn how to level there. I just do what you know my instinct tell me so yeah basically I want to have a skill tree that I don't need to respect so that is what I do and then I fill out some life on the way some life regen here so I can sustain Righteous Fire early on with two Kikazaru's Ring and a Spring Leaf Shield, right? But let's just talk about the endgame tree here. We grab life here. We grab some uh, Ignite Duration here, which is very nice for Fulcrum. If you don't have Fulcrum, don't give a shit about this. Don't need this. Just take life from somewhere else, I believe. Uh, this is... <coughs> Sorry. This is maximum resistances, very self-explanatory. Currently, if I have uh, the Corrupted Blood Jewel, I will take your elemental resistance cannot be lowered by curse. Because currently, my resistance is a little bit iffy when it comes to high, uh, high tier map and the elemental weakness. So my core resistance might go below um, 90%, 88%, a little bit, so I don't like that, so I take this one just, you know, to have quality of life, basically. Don't have random death because your resistance is reduced. If you have way over cap, you don't even need this point, put it somewhere else, I'm not sure yet. But, this is what I take, right? If I don't have the Corrupted Blood uh, here, I will have the Corrupted Blood uh, as the uh, mastery in this area, right? 
I go through here, I grab the reduced 30% extra damage from critical strike, right? That is uh, something that I take late into the character, not early on this. Uh, in late map, the crit becomes much more dangerous. Uh, just talk a little bit about the reduced crit here, so it's easier because we talk about this one here. Uh, we have 30% reduced extra damage here, 30% here, which is 60%, and we also have this mastery here. We always curse the enemy because we have curse on cast when stunned, right? So it proc all the time. So enemies that are cursed take 40%, uh, have 40% reduced extra damage as well. So that is 100% reduced extra damage from crit. So we are basically immune to crit, right? Just from the skill tree, which is very nice. Uh, I take it here because I link life tap to all of my skills. So this is a pretty nice uh, three pointer here for some damage, some reduced cost, and some life gain on kill, which is just very nice. I take this very early on when I start to play with Exanguinet at level 12, because Righteous Fire is level uh, 18. So I use uh, just the Righteous Fires from then with. Exactly when it has a extra damage for bossing, basically. Grab life here with maximum fire res. Grab this mastery. Hearty, why do I take this mastery? This is the best mastery for this character because recovery master, life recoup effect occur instead of a three seconds. So by default, this is four seconds. If you take this, this is basically 25% faster, which is also means 25% stronger in terms of recovery. And the main thing that we are recouping from is Blood Notch. I have a Blood Notch here, of course, combo with Mr. Immutable Force. So this is the bare bone of the Caswen Stun, right? You always have that Caswen Stun. And the I will explain how we get stunned later into the game, uh, in, into this uh, video. A lot might have already know it. It's the Ring called Valyrium. I will talk about it later, right? We. Get here, of course, live here, come in here, grab a lot of very nice stuff, including Ignite Chance, Damage, Resistances, the strongest life node in the game, <coughs> some area and area damage. This is Elemental Damage and some Free Shot Ignite, which mostly is for Ignite. Uh, hits have 25% chance to treat any monster resistant as inverted. I don't use any source of lower enemy resistances. I am so I use this mastery. It has full effect. The curse that I choose is punishment, which is the, also the curse that I've chosen on the AFK Juggernaut last week. Uh, I think it is extremely nice curse. Defensively, it is basically 20% 20, 20 less damage taken. Offensively, it is a lot of more multiplier basically the same amount of damage added to a build as long as you can get the target to below 50% health right effectively the number is higher but it only applies at 50% health or lower so it even out right so i think that is a very very nice curse very underused extremely strong next up uh sovereignty and maximum resistance very self-explanatory just to fit all the aura in we need this, uh, some nice life node. Later, we will grab all the leftover life that is one point away to finish level 100. Uh, because we have 10 points left, five is spent into this cluster, and then five others spent to just one, two, three, four, and uh, yeah, maybe a five point here. I don't know. Or maybe you can just put three point here for maximum life and re remove two strength node here so you have as much life as possible. Or take the regen here, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. It will be almost the same. This here, fire mastery, one life per second per one percent uncap of fire resistant. We have a huge amount of fire resistant, not you know to the level of some other builds, but just naturally we have a lot of fire resistant basically, and we are chieftain, right? So just stack it. <coughs> it will give you other resistances as well. So yeah, that's like two birds, one stone. The cluster jewel here, you grab it later. Maybe you grab it a little bit early when you are around level 70 something if you buy this nature's patient. Uh, nature's affinity, this is like 10 chaos or something. It is not entirely important to make the build function, 
but it helps a lot when you want to scale it to the end game because there's a lot of less damage taken, basically. Uh, the curse mastery here is well uh, for two purposes. First of all, is reduce the extra crit worth mastery, and then refresh duration, ignite shield, and shock on enemy you curse. So, if you inflicted one big goddamn ignite with the explosion on an enemy because you always recursed it with the cast wind stunt, it would just reapply the it would just refresh the duration of that. Uh, of that uh, ignite. So yeah, so it's just a very nice tech I learned from Victor 003. Right. Next up here, this is the last point of the skill tree. Oh, elemental overload. When you switch to the Dead chain reaction, uh, we are doing hit base on the Dead chain reaction. So elemental overload is very strong. We don't have a lot of crit to scale crit. So just use this one. Much better, 40% more damage happens all the time, right? Um, this for Ignite Chance, Ignite Duration, this is light, very self-explanatory. The last thing is Fire Mastery here. Critical Strike do not inherently ignite. We don't care about that, we don't crit most of the time anyway, just sometimes to proc the Elemental Overload. But 100% increased damage with hit against Ignited Enemy. We have like almost 100% Ignite Chance applied globally to a skill, mostly one skill that will, you know, be responsible for ignite the enemy constantly. I will show you in the skill section a little bit later. And we will always have 100% increased damage to ignite an enemy. These points are just like very nice area point because we like area of effect for, you know, faster map clear. So I dump two point here very early and then look back. I even can dump one point into here for additional 10% area of effect, right? One, two, three, three, four, five, and five point here. So yeah, that is probably the best one for level one hundred, right? That is straightforward enough, I think. The skill setup, uh, basically desecrate, cast and stunt, uh, detonate dead, cast and stunt. These are the two setup for the main damage. I have another one with a tornado of element turbulence. Wow. I have a love and hate relationship with this fucking skill. It ruined my lead starter, maybe because I'm bad at the game. But I sincerely think if you build around the skill, just replace it with any freaking skill in the game, and you will probably do like double, triple the amount of damage. It's just very, very bad when it scales to the end game, right? And. The purpose of this is this skill actually can hit up to like 12 times per target <coughs> every second because it has a fixed rate of hitting so that is very nice. You have 3 Torado up because you have it on cast and stun. You cast it constantly, you always have it up and it will hit anything, everything around you and constantly do two things. First of all is to ignite, right? You have global chance to ignite, this skill will ignite very very easily it will have we have like 85 percent chance to ignite with our flask so yeah always ignite so we have all the benefit from ignited enemy also it has another purpose because it hits so frequently we are using a ring with the mode gain 15 life per enemy hit the spell here so we hit with uh detonate dead chain reaction a lot of times per second we also have an additional skill in Tornado of Elemental Turbulence, which also hit a bunch of times and has a quite big area of effect. So as long as you have a lot of monster nearby, you will never run out of health unless you got literally one shot. So this is the current layer of recovery that I am replacing the Defiance of Destiny, which last league was like 40 chaos. Uh, to like a uh, few divine for the best roll. This league, the worst roll on the market last time I checked was 30 divine, 30 divine and there's like not many of them, like 6 to 8 to 10 or something. So I don't think the price of that item will go down. So for the moment, until we can afford that item to be like almost immortal, well, this is the way to go. And I think even then, Probably I will keep this setup with the the ring over here. 
the um, there's another source of uh, life gain on hit force spells and for everything which is through a watcher's eye but that is also expensive eight divine for the cheapest one with very low roll on the uh, vit on the uh, life gain on hit while you are affected by vitality and also the other mod is very terrible so I don't really like that one so that is my this is my decision on the extra recovery basically we also have kind of like over a thousand thousand one hundred regen all the time so that's a lot of recovery also the recoup happened over three seconds which is all the time which is a lot of uh, re recovery as well so that's that is the way we are recovery uh, recovering basically and currently i am using one life flash as well just for some you know situation that is very specific that we receive like some kind of heavy dot damage and it's not even a high level uh, flash this is a level 42 hollow flash no quality or something but it basically reduced uh, it basically will heal me to full because uh, it's a panic flash uh, we need it is not panic it is now alarm flash so when we are on low life, which we always are because we are on, um, what is this to kill? Uh, let's kill petrified blood, because we are on petrified blood, so we are always going to have this full amount in one tap of a button, immediately jump up to the uh, maximum amount of health we have uh, before, after the uh, reservation, right? The other flats are with silver. Uh, granite, amethyst, ruby, whatever. The most important item here is valerium. It allows us to be stunned again with the stun threshold based on ES. This is mandatory because the uh, previous mastery for ES uh, stun threshold is completely gutted from the skill tree. So this is the only way that we can now reliably get stunned without sacrificing a lot. The other way is, by the way, the Skyforth boots, which remove all your regeneration. Some build don't need regen. This build kind of does. And at least before Defiance of Destiny, we kind of need a lot of regen, right? So, uh, let's see the setup here. So, Ray Helmet, just live, some resistances. Uh, physical taken as fire damage. This is a very typical setup for a uh, chieftain i didn't even have uh, the eldritch currency to craft the uh, implicit but this can be much better just so you know this is just like a item i bought from the market for like 10 ks or something almost nothing uh just life and the damage taken as some chaos resist which is very low roll as well <coughs> the cloak of flame just Recently today on stream by the end of the stream I return on the stream to enable the streamer RNG so I can slick linked it I bought it six socket uh, Corrupted and then I used a total of uh, four Tainted fusions and then I got it to six link the first one failed uh, Second one failed third one fourth one got it from four to six link. So yeah, that's lucky Not that is average luck actually uh, the uh, the uh, glove here. The most important part in this glove is just ignite you inflict spread to other enemies within 1.2 meters. Uh, we use this so we don't need to use a medium cluster jewel of find the flame, right? I think this is more efficient, basically. Just get this mod. Uh, if we use find the flame, <coughs> there is one very nice mod. Instead of ignite, you inflict spread to enemies, which is chance to extinguish the enemy, which makes the enemy unable to actually free shock and ignite. That will help with some weird bug with uh, frozen and stunned. So, uh, yeah, and also it's just generally good if you have that. Uh, sometimes you just don't even need to have the immunity to free shock and ignite anyway. Uh, but here is the choice for this character that I think is going to be optimal because we already have ways to deal with the freeze shock and ignite, so we don't need it from the average modifier on gloves. So we save some points by not using a medium cluster for fan the flame, and we got the ignite proliferation from the dragon scale godland, the glove here. 
Uh, the other that rich mod is probably best in slot. I don't really sure. It's probably fire damage leech as life. So some extra recovery. I put in the no section here. Right? The helmet need to have more fist taken as fire or lightning too. That's good. And the other one is increased AOE. So that is kind of the best in slot for Eldritch modifier. The boot. Well, it's actually not, not too important, but it's actually a unique boot, so I don't even need to care about it. I forgot. Right, so, that worked out. Uh, the item here, uh, the amulet I am using is Replica Atzeri's Foible. This is nice, but not at all mandatory, just a amulet with life. Resistances will do. Basically, I got this because it's had a lot of life and a lot of regen. You don't really rely on regen too much after you ditch the Righteous Fire setup. This is nicer when you have Righteous Fires. You have a lot, lot, lot of regen even when you turn on the Righteous Fire. But uh, just life, Chaos Resistance, something around that, uh, something like that, or maybe even level of physical gem to boot the desecrate uh, level might be helpful for damage and yeah eventually it will be replaced by defiance of destiny anyway for sure uh, valerium already talked about it the boots i already talked about this one also is here for the vines it's 10 percent less damage taken on the boots 10 percent on the jewel of the Keystone of the jewel, so that is very nice. Cloak of flame, very self-explanatory here. Physical damage taken as fire, so we can mitigate the damage with the fire resistant, which we have maximum amount of. Unlike physical, where we basically do not have any armor and physical mitigation in this build, so physical taken as is very important. This one, the last piece of gear, I believe. I want. I know there's the fulcrum. I will talk about fulcrum in a little bit. Uh, this one comes binding. The most important thing here is nearby enemies convert 25 of their physical damage to fire. This is not additive to this one, so it's not 25 plus 40 is 65. It's actually roughly around 55 because uh, let's say you receive a, uh, the enemy deals 100 physical damage. It is reduced, uh, it is changed to 75 physical damage and 25 fire damage because of this belt. And then that 75 physical damage got 40% of it converted to fire with this body armor. Uh, so that is 7.5 times 4, which is 30. So that is 30 plus 25, which is 55 uh, damage. Taken as fire, basically. Of course, we have other sources here as well. Just anything that uh, is taken when hit, uh, taken as from hit, like in the helmet here, or is additive to the cloak of flame. But only this modifier is calculated before everything, right? That is how it works. <coughs> Fulcrum. This is just like a uh, nice to have item. Uh, I bought this because I checked the price of it randomly yesterday. It was 90 chaos, which is criminally underpriced, I think. So I think, well, since I'm playing this uh, chieftain build, best bet just get a full group. It will feel so much better when clearing map, especially when progressing. You will prolif the big boy ignite everywhere. So I grab it. And yeah, little that we know, the price of that item jumped up to four to five divine already today. Maybe even more. I think it will jump up more when people realize this league is also a league kind of good for tanky build. And the tanky build that can clear very well, we already know from last league. Fucking chieftain, maybe an MF chieftain, right? MF Chieftain it's nerfed this league if you want to go MF you have to sacrifice a lot of gear here for the MF stuff and you lose out on one ring basically because you have to use Valyrium for the Caspian stun unless <coughs> if you want to keep both the rings 
you cannot actually use the cast when stunt setup you only can do something like righteous fire and then if righteous fire kill the target it will <coughs> explode and then it will probably ignite ignite probably the ignite right uh, is there anything else that I want to talk about? Okay, so this POV, by the way, I want to go through configuration a little bit. So, kill all bandit, so Arkali and so Shakari. This is the best so for tanky build in the game, I think, personally. Uh, I am adding 20% less damage taken and 40% chance to deal double damage in here. Why? Because I don't see the setting for Vine in, uh, in in this so far. So, yeah, Grasping Vine is... I don't see it in here, basically. So, I don't know where it is. I cannot find it. So, I just add Custom Modifier to replicate the fact that I have 20 Grasping Vine on me. It will be 20% less damage taken and 40% chance to deal double damage, basically. And the later row here, 100% increased chaos resistance. It's just there because I'm lazy to change the gear to a POB that have cap chaos rest. As you can see, my gear here is dog shit, right? Uh, very, very low resistance. Very, very low resistance. Very, very low resistance, right? So we have a lot of room for resistances and the sleep. We also have tattoo, so potentially that is also another way for us to fix the resistances. So there's a lot of way for you to improve your chaos resistance. I just am lazy to edit everything, so that is why this is here. I also explained in the note, right? So it is confused. I'm not trying to, you know cheat or something here to make the POV looks better basically that row is just for extra chaos resistance so it is more than 75 percent so the, the the you can see the chaos max hit whenever we reach uh, the actual gear the optimal gear for the character which is not hard by the way this character is like two days old it reached level 90 already uh, and yeah, that's absolutely blasting through red maps. As you can see in the beginning of the video, I go through a Guardian map. Nothing too fancy, but with the leak mechanic being random, and when I take the keystone on Atlas Tree, that potentially can have some random shit going on that will just kill a normal character. This one can do it just fine. Sometimes here and there you will still die because you are not optimally set up. With Defiance of Destiny, I doubt I will die in just anything below tier 17 I don't have any tier 17 yet if I do I will test it and you know let you guys know uh, last thing very last thing I want to mention don't look at this uh, number of DPS just uh, feel it in the game why because it's complicated the core skill I have set up the core skill I have a, video, a whole video on it um, with the Summon Spectre and Mitsak, which is a new minion, uh, which is the comeback minion of this league, which basically have the most amount of health in the game for a corpse. And we have six of those added, you know, six of the, uh, the uh, Mitsak summoned as the uh, minion from Ray Spectre, and then we add those to the pool of the Desecrate, basically. So, our Desecrate will have a good chance to create Meat Sack and that explode for a huge amount more damage compared to a normal course. The default course is just a skeleton from Desecrate and also any any monster, almost any monster in normal mapping or simulacrum or whatever content you do will not have the same kind of health as the Meat Sack and you know if you don't want to go through a lot you can just use the Kitava's Hero it will be like 10% less health compared to the Mitsak. <coughs> but this league, Mitsak is the way to go if you want to maximize the damage from corpses. That is not at all reflected in this. This is taking the default corpse damage, uh, the default corpse life. Maybe it's from the skeleton from the Desecrate, I think. Uh, if we go in game here and I. Uh, let me uh, take out Castle and Stun and cast the Desecrate myself. Uh, let me see here. We have Bone Stalker Meat Sack. Yeah, that's great. Bone Stalker Meat Sack. Bone Stalker. Bone Stalker is 
as you can see here, we desecrate once, we have two meat sacks. Cool. Yeah, two meat sack and three bones. All right. Another one, let's see. There are more than that, but well. Yeah, so basically, uh, I think the, the damage that it got in the uh, in the POV is actually just the regular Bone Stalker here, right? But we have Misak, which is big boy damage compared to it. So, just feel the damage in the game, right? We all know how broken the damage of the Detonate Dead of Chain Reaction is. Well, yeah, I rest my case there. So... If you like this build, feel free to ask any question. If you don't understand any part of this video, it is longer than I thought. But, you know, I will leave the POV in the description. And, you know, I'm very close to a thousand subscriber here. So, please like and subscribe if you think this is interesting or helpful. Much, much appreciated. And see you in the next video. I also stream every day, every weekday uh, from around 9 p.m. EST to 3 a.m. morning time EST. So join me. I leave the Twitch link in the description also. So peace. See you in the next video or stream.